when I uh, first started uh, dealing with the question of community radio, I was trying to slot it in my mind as to where does it fit. Because uh, the Indian broadcasting space has seen uh, epoch-making transformation in the last two decades. <coughs> We've uh, gone from one broadcaster to 852, insofar as television is concerned, give or take a few. Sukhreji will have the exact figures with her. Even in the radio space, we've gone from one uh, national broadcaster, All India Radio, to a plethora of uh, FM uh, radio stations across the country. Of course, uh, news is not uh, allowed to be broadcast, but ingenuity uh, has no limits and uh, some of them do find their own ways of broadcasting uh, a variant of news. <coughs> and then you've had this uh, complete uh, explosion of uh, what is called uh, the new media space or the, the, the social media space whereby if you go by the estimates which are available in the public <coughs> domain, India may be having about 7 crore broadcasters who are on Twitter, who are on Facebook, who are on various other uh, media platforms. So therefore the ability of people to be able to put out their views in the public space has grown up, grown up exponentially. And while uh, we have the proliferation of the instruments of information dissemination on one hand, you have uh, a growing intolerance and uh, a growing impatience with the ability to be able to accommodate if not appreciate each other's viewpoint. And this is what I call the paradox of the short fuse. That uh, while we have empowered people, technology has given us the opportunity to be able to increasingly become public even with our private views. Our ability to be able to take in that cross-section of opinion is unfortunately uh, on a very thin sin sin uh, syndrome, thin skin syndrome for the lack of a better expression. And therefore I was uh, <coughs> always trying to figure as to where does community radio fit into this paradigm. And one day while I was applying myself to this question, a bulb clicked in my mind. And that is, uh, before I became Minister for Information and Broadcasting, I had the honor of serving my party as its spokesperson for four and a half years. And I used to always marvel <coughs> that uh, there are two discourses in this country a national discourse which is really relevant to two and a half miles of Raisina Hill. And there is another discourse which plays out in the rest of the country. While the former feeds into the latter, the latter rarely feeds back into the former. And I used to experience this on a weekly basis that uh, when I used to go, go to my constituency on a Friday evening, Whatever we would do out here from Monday to Friday in terms of television debates, the various uh, uh, responses or the various proactivism on issues which were national or of international import or even of regional import, somehow none of that used to figure in the conversations which I used to have with my constituents. Uh, 
it seemed as if that this course was really irrelevant to their lives. Their concerns were extremely local. Their demands were development oriented. Uh, they were circumscribed by the immediate needs of their lives. And week after week, I used to have this dichotomy that uh, five days we would do something and when we would go down to the people who have elected us and sent us here, I would realize that they seem to be living in a different world altogether. It was not the disconnect of the India and the Bharat, but it was <coughs> the disconnect of different discourses which are playing out concurrently in this country on a 24 into 7 basis. And that is where I discovered that community radio or the community radio movement has a hugely important role to play. Uh, some of those issues are extremely dry, they're extremely localized, uh, they obviously uh, would not generate the kind of excitement which advertisers are looking for, which essentially are the revenue models on which the broadcasting industry thrives. Uh, so therefore, uh, they do not kind of find that kind of visibility or, the, or find that kind of display uh, in what we call uh, colloquially the national discourse. But those are the real issues, which issues of poverty alleviation, issues of water, uh, issues with regard to uh, how uh, uh, rural communities or farming communities need to innovate and improve on their techniques. And I can go on chapter and verse uh, delineating that. And therefore, uh, we decided that we would try and give the community radio movement in this country uh, the greatest Philip that we can. <coughs> Unfortunately, uh, since we are also like other government departments, uh, really thin in terms of uh, the manpower that we can devote to this particular issue, uh, it's, uh, it's an effort which really has to be led by the community. And I can understand that uh, when uh, Supriyaji flagged the issue of sustainability of community radio, possibly it is the most germane uh, uh, and the most vital issue which must be uppermost in the minds of people who run these uh, uh, very important but little initiatives on a 24 into 7 basis. And therefore, uh, you know, before I had come in, an initiative was taken with the, the Directorate of Audiovisual Publicity to start impaneling community radio uh, to see as to how their revenue models can be made uh, more sustainable. And uh, if I remember correctly from the top of my head, uh, about six crores of advertisement had gone out from the Directorate of Audiovisual Publicity in the last year. Uh, to the community radio movement. Of course, it is a drop in the ocean compared to uh, what we do for the rest of the uh, media space, but I think it's a beginning which uh, has been well made. But as we look forth into the 12th plan, and uh, we have put in place a very holistic and a very comprehensive proposal, and I would like to read out uh, some of the initiatives that we propose to take, that more than 500 new community radios are proposed to be set up in the 12th plan period. Assistance will be available for operating community radio stations. We are also working on several other important initiatives, which includes peer review of community radio stations, capacity building of community radio operators, code of ethics for self-regulation of content by community radio stations, etc. Out of the 100 crores proposed in the 12th plan, 10 crores are proposed for training, capacity building, awareness activities, and the remaining 90 crores have been proposed towards extending <coughs> financial support towards the community uh, radio station movement. Provision has already all, has been made for providing grants for innovation in the sector, for research and development of technology. We also have a provision for emergency grants for the community radio movement. And here I would like to say that uh, 
it is not that we are going to get circumscribed by the 100 crores that we have set forth in the 12th plan. If we find that uh, the community radio movement actually picks up on the ground, it requires uh, increasingly more support from the government, uh, we would be more than prepared to walk the extra mile. But I think uh, when you start talking about government funding, uh, there, is, uh, there are also questions of autonomy, there are also questions of arm's length relationships, there are also questions of, uh, uh, of, of the, the, the independence of the whole community radio movement, uh, which need to be factored in. And those are questions which will have to be deliberated at length uh, by the practitioners of this movement because they are increasingly important that if we are going to have a vital uh, and a vigorous and a robust debate in the community radio space, then uh, to what level should be the government uh, interface with this entire effort is something which uh, will need to be determined. On uh, Spectrum Free, as uh, Supriyaji has briefed you, we took it up, the Secretary took it up very proactively with the Ministry of Telecommunications. We believe that they are planning to uh, respond to our request and waive the Spectrum fee. We do look forward uh, uh, to their uh, to their continued support uh, in this endeavor. And uh, if at all uh, the uh, Ministry of Telecommunications responds positively, I think uh, they need to be applauded because uh, in the times that we live in, uh, to take a decision with regard to the allocation of spectrum on uh, possibly a pro bono or a subsidized basis is a very courageous decision to take. And Mr. Sibyl, you know, if he walks that uh, extra mile, needs to be really complimented by the community radio movement uh, for having uh, demonstrated commitment in terms of action uh, to, this, uh, to this entire movement. Uh, lastly, I would just like to end by saying that uh, the Secretary flagged for my attention the issue of uh, allowing news uh, to be run on uh, community radio. News, as you know, is a very tricky business because uh, when uh, we started giving out uh, licenses uh, in the news and the non-news, non-current affairs category, Somewhere that distinction seems to have blurred. So you have actually more news which runs on non-news channels and you have views which run on news channels. So therefore, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the entire paradigm has uh, got completely uh, redefined. Uh, but uh, I think we will be able to make a beginning and uh, like uh, what is proposed for FM in its third phase of expansion that uh, the All India Radio capsules are uh, supposed to be uh, allowed to be run if uh, subject to the GOM and the cabinet taking a view on it. Uh, on uh, FM channels, we can possibly think of in the first phase of extending uh, the same concessions uh, if somebody in the community uh, radio movement would find that to be useful. Of course, uh, there is going to be no compulsion at all if somebody does not want to run it. You know, they are uh, free uh, not to accept it. But uh, that's 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 a beginning which uh, we may be uh, prepared to make subject to, you know, whatever is the consensus among the uh, various uh, stakeholders. And uh, once again, I would like to compliment you. Uh, you've completed uh, 10 years of uh, this pioneering effort. And uh, as we go into more anniversaries of this truly revolutionary movement, I do hope uh, that uh, conferences like this would be hosted by the community radio movement itself and the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting would really be invited as a guest. Thank you and thank you very much.